Hi, Jeff Love from Alternative Heating and Supplies. This is the problematic chapter two. This is where most people have problems or they're running for a couple years and they're finding out that their house is not keeping up with the temperature on a cold winter day or windy day or certain other problems that come up. So if, if you haven't installed your boiler yet, go back to chapter one, learn how to install it properly. Uh, I'm gonna go into the problems that I get all the time and people calling and saying, look, I'm having problems. My buddy told me to install it this way. My, my plumber taught, did it this way and, and I'm having problems. And I'm hoping that this video will solve a lot of those problems and those phone calls for people because unfortunately it's gonna cost them a lot of money because basically what I tell them is what I told you in, in video number one or chapter one of this uh, episode here um, to basically undo everything and redo it which a lot of time a lot of money and and more parts usually so what the most common problem is as in in chapter one I basically tell you you never touch the supply side it comes through you break it into the return side and you are so it's going to come in here and out here and that's a basically the install it's just that simple but what most people do is they will find it they will look at the system they won't think this out and they will actually look because you're breaking the main trunk line this is the main inch and a quarter pipe usually what it is but they'll look at the manifolds and say wait a minute i got a port here and a port here because they're usually made out of black t's and sometimes a lot of the plumbers add extra zones on because they don't know if they're going to add another zone or heating a garage or whatever so there's actually sometimes extra zones that are just capped. So the, the plumbers or the people will actually, uh, the do-it-yourselfers will actually say, well, wait a minute, I got a zone right here and I'll take this plate and I'll mount it right here, okay? So what they'll do is they'll pull off this side and they'll pull it in here and then they'll pull it out of the heat exchanger and over to the return side and then they'll put a circulator in there. And that's identified by a circle with a triangle if you're ever looking at a chart. So what will happen, and so this is now up here, okay, this is now the plate exchanger. Obviously I can't draw that big of a plate exchanger up in here. What's gonna happen, let's, let's say hypothetically, the, the boiler is up to 175 degrees. So the water's gonna go up, and you've gotta remember we have three other zones plus this new zone, which is four, and the water's gonna come up into here, and it's gonna be sucked this way into the plate exchanger, which is being heated by the wood furnace and the water's coming into this at 180 and come back out. So the water in here is hot. So it's gonna come in here and heat up. So now it's heating up this water, which is already at 175 degrees. And as I told you in chapter one, you'll have about a six degree delta T. So if the water's coming in at 180, the most you could ever get out of it is 175. So you're really not heating anything. Okay, so the water's circulating and now it's dumping back into this manifold. But in this manifold, the water's leaving here at 175, going through these zones, coming back at 152, 145, 155, and now we're gonna add 175 from that new zone that we added, which is gonna give us 627. Now that there's four zones, with these other temperatures coming back at 152, 155, 145, plus the 175, and you're gonna divide that by four now. And that's gonna give us a temperature being all mixed together. So 152 is coming in here, 145, 155, and now mixed with 175, they're all gonna to come together and go down this main pipe at 156 degrees. That's if all zones are firing. That's gonna go back into the boiler. Now it's in here at 156, and let's say it's still running. So the water's gonna go through again, and roughly you're losing 20 degrees in these zones. So it's gonna go out 156, it's now gonna go through this plate exchanger and it's gonna be heated back up to roughly, let's say, 175. That means your boiler will never exceed 156 and it will slowly but surely start to lose its core temperature. No matter what you do, you cannot have three zones against one and expect it to keep up. A lot of people will do it this way and have a lot of excess for the first couple years.
The reasons why, the plate exchangers are extremely clean. The flow rates are beautifully high. The surface area in there, you're not having any rust or corrosion or buildup on the plate exchangers. The pumps are running at full capacity. Gallons per minute flows are maxed out. Just like you know, everything over time starts to weaken and slow down a little bit. Also, the efficiencies of your home are dropping off, referring to the, the house is settling, the cracks and in the, the insulation start to diminish a little bit. That's why older homes have very poor insulation. When they were built, they weren't that bad. That's why this is happening. So this is one of the main culprits of why uh, people call me a couple years after they installed because they saw their buddy do it. Um, another very big problem is that they talk to people who don't know how to connect a boiler to a boiler. Now, it, there's a lot of plumbers out there that know the inside of a boiler and how to install the boiler aspect beautifully. And there's no problem with that. But when you ask them how to make a boiler work with another boiler, it, most plumbers, and not all of them, but have a very difficult time understanding the concept and, and they will find this. And also a lot of homeowners will see this as the simplest way to install it, when actually I find it the, one of the hardest ways to install it because now you're breaking into two zones or the supply and return of a boiler. Now here's the other problem and where people also lose heat is if you design, if the plumber designed the system to have six gallons per minute going through each zone, so 18 gallons a minute, and this zone, water will travel the easiest path, and especially with a pump and a very short loop. So if this was designed to run at six or eight gallons a minute, which is an average loop, now you're only sending four, maybe six gallons of water through these zones, okay? Which is weakening these zones. So instead of it taking 20, 30 minutes for that zone to heat up, now it's taking 40, 45 minutes. And again, if you're losing the core temperature at 56, that temperature loss is gonna make that zone run even longer. And eventually it will never keep up. And that's the problem. And you'll find certain parts of your house getting colder. That's another reason, and that's the reason why that's happening. Another problem that seems to be a big problem is on top of the installation aspect of where it is, is the pump sizing. A lot of manufacturers will actually say, hey, we're gonna sell you a pump and the pump comes free with the stove. Well, how is the pump sized for its application? Every application is different. Are you gonna put it 50 feet away or 150 feet away? It's all different. So having a generalized pump does not solve the problem. So if it's installed here or here, the pump gallons per minute flow is very important. Now, we here at Alternative Heating know this because we've been doing this for 14 years, sizing pumps to outdoor boiler applications. So it's very simple for us. And actually, there's a video that I have put out on pumps and give you some general uh, concepts of what pumps to use based on your distances and applications. But you're always welcome to give us a call. I'll show the number below and we'll size the pump for you. And these are the, we can only size the pumps that we know, which we sell. Now, if you're calling us about different pumps that we, that we don't know about or don't carry, we don't know the answers, okay? Um, and the pumps that I sell are made specifically for this application is the only reason I carry these pumps. So you should have, a lot of questions is, is how many gallons per minute flow should you have going back and forth to your outdoor wood boiler? The answer to that question is anywhere from eight to 12. Now, how are you gonna determine how many gallons per minute flow you have going back and forth is a very difficult thing and very expensive if you have the tools and the, or the parts to determine that. But the best way to do it if you're really, really eager to know is you're gonna have to cut the return line and basically you turn on your pump, fill up your wood boiler as high as it'll go, put that into a five gallon bucket, get two or three of them there, set your stopwatch, see how fast you fill up those buckets and how many buckets you fill up within one minute. Gallons per minute, gallons per minute. So if you fill up 10 gallons or two five gallon buckets in one minute, you're running 10 gallons per minute flow. That's just a general way of finding it, but it gets you in the ballpark. Not absolutely necessary. If you ask us to size the pumps, we're usually gonna nail it right on the head anyways. It's always in, when we size them, we always try to nail between eight to 12. And in our case, we just use 14 years of experience, and this is all we do for a living, of hooking up outdoor wood boilers to indoor heating systems. So that's how we got our expertise. So those areas, and a lot of these problems can be fixed very rapidly and easily. Um, unless it's installed in the incorrect place. If it's installed like this, my suggestion is undo it, go back to video number one, and redo it this way. You'll notice that you're not running a core temperature of 156 anymore. 
You'll be up in the 170 to 175 range. Your wife will be happy. You'll have endless hot water and everything will be good. And that's really it. Now, this also, these zones also apply to boiler mates and everything. And here's my last favorite saying I say to everybody that's installing these boilers. All the return zones, all of them, if you have a boiler mate over here, okay, and it's tied back in here, okay, all the return zones must go through the plate exchanger before returning to the boiler as long as you follow the, that basic line. All the return zones must go through the plate exchanger before returning to the boiler and your system will run beautifully. That's really all I have for you and if it's not done that way, I recommend you doing it that way. If you have anything besides what I've shown here, there's hundreds of variables, but please go back to this. This will solve your problem 99% of the time. And if it doesn't, feel free to call us. We're here to help you um, and let us know. But give us a thumbs up, let us know what you think. Uh, comment, um, you know, I can't fix everybody's problem via the phone. I'm not a heating and cooling expert. I'm only an expert at hooking up these two systems. But I can't design your heating systems. I can't heat design your heating systems. I can guide you to the parts and things that you might need for those heating systems, but you've got to design them or have someone help you design them. But thank you for checking us out at Alternative Heating and Supplies. Let us know what you think and we appreciate our customers. Thank you.